subscribe to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Done the intros. Like to welcome everybody to Let's Talk Racing. Does that answer your question? Yeah, <laughs> We're getting on him now. Okay. <laughs> You've been sitting there the whole time and you're asking if we've done the intros. Come on. I I didn't see it on the screen. I didn't either. When yeah. was the last time you seen me do anything on the screen last like week? that? Not. Yes. Not. I did. did Not. You? I don't remember. I don't because no. we were picking on Scott. Yeah, I was busy probably. And now as everybody knows, Scott's not here. I God. haven't done it for over a month. I thought you did it last so week. We, we upgraded the, the software dangerous. and everything else, so... I think Scott got stopped for his autograph. <laughs> by the, I hope the cops... By the state police. police. <laughs> <laughs> the state police stopped him to get his autograph. Exactly. Marvin, you have anything to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't You wish you had, though, huh? Um, but we Wait. did get the chance to go out and see Scott this weekend. Now, now when he comes in, y'all just... Remember, you got to throw him we got to put our glasses on. we got our new... Uh, Wiley X. Wiley X. Glasses. Wiley X. Thanks to Alan out there. And Roger. We've been staying on him for what? Three months. And we finally got him. No, if you check it. Two and a half. Uh, these three. are really nice, man. You can't beat them. Nope. So, looking forward to those. But we got a chance during the rain to go see Scott. And uh, he, he had a, a major racing, the way he was going to handle that race. Too bad we didn't stay around until 3 o'clock in the morning to see him do that. But... Uh, he started what? 18th? No, no, where he started. He finished, okay, but he 13th. finished 13th. Out of 26. And now a cop's got him and he's getting his autograph. So uh, <laughs> maybe he gave you that shirt that he had. What do you think? Yeah. That, that and $50 still ain't going to get you. Trying <laughs> so, to get $50 to make get you some extra time in jail. Yeah, it didn't work out good for him. Well, me and Roger went on down to Langley this weekend. They had the uh, Hampton Heat 200. And uh, we got down there 5.30, 6, 6. Yeah, about 6. Yeah. And we were like all gung-ho, and all of a sudden rain came in. It was a little teeny shower. Nothing major. They could dry the track. Everything was cool. Next thing you know, I'm like, Roger, you got anything on the radar? Nothing's on the radar. All of a sudden, he goes, well, there's this little green dot. You know, what do we used to do before we had cell phones mm -hmm. and Doppler radar and everything else? Next thing you know, That little green dot kept growing and we, growing. we barely made it out. He was on my back. We're trying to run through there. We're trying to not get wet. Al ended up getting soaked. And the next thing you know, it was buckets. And you got something smart to say. Here we go. Today is not going to be my day. He was on your back? We were running. Now, I didn't say I was carrying Oh, okay. Him. I was just going to Okay, see, you, you were envisioning that. I was, you know, I was, he, he likes to envision strange things like yeah, that. I was just... Yeah. I was, how do you? Does your mind go about those things that you? But how about? you and Scott always bring up stuff that seems to be turned around. And speaking of Scott, oh now he's look at our new glasses. Let's uh, make his grand entrance. What do you we, think? We appreciate you finally showing up in your pink shirt. Do you like that? Don't you? <laughs> hey, we heard uh, the cop get you with that autograph. Huh? Did the cop get you and want your autograph? Look, we even got you a set. That's all right. That. Don't worry for a couple white files. Roger got them for you. Roger, Adam. All of them. So where were you? When? Just now. I was on my way here. Well, he said you had car trouble. I knew it was better than that. I knew you couldn't have car trouble. So <laughs> he's a mechanic. He had car right, trouble. yeah, he knew that could have been. Traffic is actually getting to the interstate. Was, was I'm, not going, I'm not going. I'm not going to say anything about his mechanical skills at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll wait until after he gets in his truck and it starts up. By the way, there was a question for you, Scott. What position did you start at Saturday? Yeah. Other than in a very dark you know area. What position you finished? Um, 14th is where I started. Oh, oh, so he only got up he one. one. Say he gained one. Well, the, the old did you spin him out? No, I spun out. Yeah, we had, it was so tight from all, from all the um, pants and heat guys practicing, so we t we loosened the cart up. Well, then it rained all the rubber off, and then they ran the race before we ran. We didn't run until 2 o'clock in the morning. So, I freed it up a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a mistake. We, we rolled up. We were, like, running 8th to 9th, and it just got loose. My part, my 
teammate behind me got loose and then just spun me. Now, you want to say something? No, I'm not going to say Teammate behind him? Because I, hey, probably... I did out-qualify all my team members this week. See, he said behind him. Even the girl on the team? Yeah. Yeah. The one you joined her fan club? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're on to you, man. But I tell you, it was We're a, stalkers it was on a, Facebook. <laughs> it was a wreck fest. He's wearing pink, though. He has his manly hood. He's okay. I ain't scared. Yeah. I didn't say a word. <laughs> You did say something about me. I just said in your pink shirt. shirt. I just said in your pink shirt. But you, there was the time you said it in. Oh, well, at least you don't oh. want to say right, This is a racing run. show, so we need to talk racing. We are. So I was telling you about About real racing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about my, well, I spun like in the front of the pack. That's a potential. In the front of the pack. Did you yeah, hear that? Yeah, we were in front. And I... I was spun and I didn't even look left because I was just waiting for somebody to cream me. I just didn't even. He, he and said in front didn't. of the pack. He didn't say in front Could of the lead pack. I was in the lead pack. We'll work on those PR skills. Right <laughs> <laughs> um, but we we managed to. But it was like it was a red fest. Okay, now hold on. Not everybody knows that Langley ended up having a rain delay. Didn't start the uh, late model race till about eleven twenty. At night, no. At, it was. I think it was a little bit earlier than that. Okay. I think that their race was about two hours. So they carried it on till one thirty. Then y'all got started at two in the morning. Right about two. Wow. Uh, we left there. Um, I got home at six in the morning. They, it was funny. It rained earlier in the day. Right. We and we had already there. got qualifying and stuff in, and then. They put us on the field, on the starting grid, on the track, and we were getting ready to start up. And Bill was had a few minutes from getting up in the tower because Bill actually runs our race. Right. And uh, the bottom just fell out. It started a light little sprinkle, and Mark has these great big, we call them go-kart condoms, but it's a great big plastic things that for the company he works with, they use them to fill, uh, they sell plastic for making molds. Mm -hmm. um, and shoved it over my cart, and the next thing you know, the bottom just come out, and people are, I see people cranking their carts up, driving through the rain, and I'm sitting in there strapped in, and I'm like, damn, is anybody gonna push me back in? And finally, one of the, uh, tell Don't say drivers, nothing, you just wife, said push. I know. <laughs> I, I've heard that, PR I have heard that a lot since he's been, that you know, his teammate was pushing push him, him. Well, you and he had to get push pushed to the, I don't know, go ahead, let's stop. He brought if you do anything it about it, hey, he brought it up. I was just going along with what Look, he said. I ain't talking to you because you tried. He went and tried to hobnob the last couple days up over. Oh, well, he was at Hendrick kissing the bricks. Me and you out there busting our butts. I know. I texted him. I said, "You know, you're an asshole." Because <laughs> <laughs> so okay, now go ahead and tell us about being at yeah, Hendrick. Yeah, so how was yeah. that? That was good. Right. Now, you know, the important one was first. Who? Me. Oh, I thought you were talking about Brian. Um, <laughs> I like the way he thinks. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, Big Jack. <laughs> no, I was I mean I had a blast. It was a lot of fun to get to I got to see the brick. No, was it real bricks that they had laid down or was that like no, a no, 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 mat that looked That was like a rubber brick? mat that they laid down for the guys in the shop to yeah. go up to kiss them. That was pretty cool. I, I mean, mean to, to help yeah, bring back to cool. the shop to those guys to make them feel like they yeah. plus they had the yeah. trophy and they had the guitar that they got and everything, it was all there for them and they got to get their pictures made just like everybody else. Now, you said something earlier uh, when we were talking, you know, you ended up getting a single break. What they did What they did was, after the after the race over, after they did the kissing the bricks, and before they left the racetrack, yeah, yeah. the old brickyard, you know, the whole thing was bricks. Yeah. They, they went, the old brick. they took the old bricks and put them behind the racetrack over there. Gotcha. Only I I don't I don't know if, if Jeff was one of the few that knew about these or whatever because it had been done before from what I heard. No, I thought every winner got a real brick. Well, every winner Winter. gets a winner, but just the whole team got. Well, I'm sure Rick struck the check for that. Well, somebody did. they went out behind. They all went out behind the track and picked their own bricks. Wow! And That's brought cool. them back. Brought them back. So yeah. when you were saying that earlier, I was wondering, man, I wonder if they were down there starting to no, take I the knew, bricks up I off knew, the track. No, I, I knew know, they know. had saved all those bricks and they okay. give them away. I thought it was just like for the winter. Or, I mean, mm -hmm. they must have a gazillion. There is a, at least yeah. there was a bunch of them back there. They, they, everybody got to go out and pick one. He got me one, but That's I haven't cool. got it yet. I haven't got it yet. But now a lot of people you, may you not know your ties with buddy. Hendrick. Your son yes. is uh, involved with Hendrick uh, yeah. as a front end suspension specialist on the 24. Gotcha. 
So he's he got to kiss the bricks, and I thought that was really cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, it, really, it really is. And having a brick, I mean, that's got to be. I mean, how many people's got one? I mean, really think about it. Of course, he. Uh, they put a little plate on it too. I should. They're gonna put a nameplate. Yeah, they've already got them. They've already got them done. Um, but I guess I shouldn't say this. But he did bring his he did bring his uh, purple yeah. crown royal pillow back, which he wasn't supposed to bring back. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed those out there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was like, I don't remember seeing those before. No. Supposedly Jeff and Mr. Hendrick and all of them were supposed to get them, but a few of the guys decided they were just going to confiscate them. them well, <laughs> usually that's what you got to do if you want one, or if you want something, you just got. <clears throat> So, Take it. I mean, I think they, he, they can get another one if they want one. I think they, he kind of snuck it back to the truck and got it back here. And so it was really cool. I mean, it was the whole thing. It was really great to see all those guys down there having a good time with it. It was really fun. So yeah. now your son now has been, has he been a Daytona? Yes. With a Daytona team. Yep. Winner. Winner. Andy. And where's another big one? Talladega. Talladega. Goodness gracious, man. That's a lot to be proud of. What is awesome. Martinsville. Yep, got Martinsville. Got Kansas. And, and and he was there, so that was pretty cool yeah. to watch him when. when that was the. No, yeah. like, that was last year. Yeah, yeah. that was his the fall we race. There. That was his. Yeah. That was his first win since the incident before with the with the uh, suspension and everything. He went back to work with him with Hendrick. Came over from Waltrip. Over yeah, Hendrick. got over there, and that was his first win. That was a big deal. Wow. Yeah, no, that was a real big deal. And, and you're talking Daytona, Talladega, Indy. Goodness gracious. Man. Charlotte. Charlotte. Kansas. Kansas. Man, that you. Well, have you been out of Kansas? Yes. Beautiful track. I love it out there. And the way they built that track is just so awesome. I mean, the first time we went down there, or I had the opportunity to go down there with the trucks probably five years ago, uh, Man, I, I was like, man, it's building up so much around here. Because as you know, like when you go out to Atlanta down in uh, Hampton, Georgia and stuff, they build the track way out here. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this is built right around everything. You can see a soccer field, but, stadium, but the thing about it is, casino. The, state, the, the racetrack was there first. There first. All this stuff built up around it. And it, is, it is huge. around. Everything around it is unbelievable. I fell Beautiful. in love with that place when I was out there. Yeah. I had a blast. It was the only thing I didn't fall in love with was when we went out there. I love the airport. Get in, and get out. It was a small airport, yep. about an hour away. But when it rains, the hail comes in. You better take cover. Yeah, you got that. Because area. it is golf size hail mm -hmm. out of that area, and a storm can come up on you just in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but yeah, good racing out there. Beautiful track. Well, beautiful good. area and good food. So. But um, now y'all are racing South Boston. Yeah, this weekend. Are you gonna show your monkey butt up? I don't know. I'm are thinking you going? About it. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. It, hold it's, on. He must know somebody else that's racing because I know he's. <laughs> I know. Right here. I he's know. Hold on. Other people racing. Do you think he wouldn't just show up just for me? Hold on. Can I ask y'all one question? This may be personal. No. When you hang out with Scott Allen at the racetrack, <laughs> I'll go say hi. That's good. That's a start. That's a start. He, he might wear his shirt. No. <laughs> No, I don't think so. <laughs> not even. I would die. Could we just I would one? die. I would die. <laughs> Can we get? I like actually really, I actually really started to wear it tonight. Were you really <laughs> done? But I said no. I'm not gonna give you all the benefit. This has got to be something cool. Oh god. Mm. Right. You gotta talk. <laughs> Can I read this? Yeah, go with your permission. What is it? Okay. This is a. Uh, Response Brennan? from Brennan. Back uh, back okay, buddy. Check this out. <laughs> Check this out. Hello, Jack was going? down in Charlotte the past couple of days and didn't even go by and visit me. <laughs> this was Roger to Brennan. Brennan says, dang, man, what a sucker. Now he is the president of the family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, he's going to say Charlotte. It. Well, his shop is... Well, he did. He, we talked about that a little earlier. Um, Kernersville. He's in Kernersville. So it is yeah. a little bit more of a tote. I tell you, we gotta go. By, we should go by there when uh, if we go to Martinsville. So we don't hang out or something. I mean, is that <laughs> okay? Hey, look, when we're at you ain't got no choice. You gotta hang out with your yeah, No, man, I'm just standing right beside you. <laughs> Are y'all all, all wear your shirts? No. <laughs> I wear my shirt already. I'm gonna get one of those shirts that I'm with dumbass or something. <laughs> there over. you go. There you go. And I'm gonna make sure Brian's on the other side. I'll get one of the 
turns. Hey, we'll, have, we'll have one, you know, on the front side, we'll have the air on the side, on the back side, that way. And then, you know, stand I'll just turn. In the <laughs> All right. Oh, Kale's on the line. Kale Connor's on the line, so if you'll go ahead, monkey. I mean, uh, Scott. They don't put me in the middle because I don't know how to operate the phone. Kale Conley, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm great. This is Jack. I got Scott Allen and Brian Morehouse and uh, Roger Brim here tonight. And uh, are you getting ready to go up to Iowa? Yeah, I'm actually here now. We just we flew in today. Uh, we got Tech Day tomorrow, and we're actually going to be What's the weather like out there right now? Not bad. Uh, a little cloudy, a little cool, cooler than I thought it would be, but that can only mean good things. So I think we'll uh, have a beautiful day to tech the cars tomorrow and then a good day to race them on Friday. So you're just doing the K&N race out there? Yeah, I wish we were doing the nationwide race, but the 33 guys are in Pocono uh, doing a truck. So just k in this week. Now, are you racing your own car this year, or are you racing for anybody, Kale? Uh, the, the 47 car, that's, that's a family-owned uh, family deal. Um, we, we've been in the Can-Am Series a couple seasons. Uh, one full-time season last year, we, we ran all the races, and, and then uh, part-time other than that. So this year, we, we ran it uh, three times. Well, this will be our third, and we, we ran pretty good. Uh, at Bristol, we run fourth and cut our right front, and we finished third from last at New Hampshire. So uh, we've been in the top five pretty much each time other than falling out at Bristol, but I uh, expect good things this weekend at uh, Iowa. Well, you did pretty good out at Iowa last year when you went out there, didn't you, uh, for two races? Yeah, not bad. Um, you know, I found I found a pole out here, and... And finished third out here, so I think if we could uh, walk away with that win that we're looking for, we'd all be happy. But it's a unique group of guys. We got uh, one of my best buds from Ohio State, and uh, he came down for a couple months, and he's helping helping out. So it's like a it's like a backyard garage kind of race team. Harold Holly, he he uh, he's gonna crew chief it, and he he. Uh, He's got a full-time job, so, you know, it's like a, everyone gets together after work and kind of helps out one of those deals. So to, to get a win with these guys would be huge because there's only four of us. Man. Hey, Gail, where is your shop? Is it, are you on the on the children's property? I saw your truck out there the other day. Yeah, we're, uh, we're right up across the street from the cup shop. It's, it's just, uh, it used to be where they would keep you know, some of the race cars that weren't being worked on at the time. It's like a little storage building. It's like the uh, same as a garage at a house, pretty much. I mean, there's no airlines. We, there's no, uh, we do have electric, so that's kind of nice, but no service plate. I mean, we're, uh, we're really knocking it back a few uh, centuries on the uh, spectrum when it comes to old school. What made y'all move up there? Uh, didn't you used to be out at Mooresville Sports Park over there uh, near the drag strip? Yeah, last year we, we uh, when we ran full time, we we rented a shop from Mooresville and did the full race team deal. Had had uh, several full time guys and and we just didn't we didn't run near as well as we thought we would. Um, team chemistry was good. We just we just never could click on the right thing, so. We uh, we decided to do something a little different this year with the K&N stuff, and we approached it a lot more relaxed and a lot more like we would if we were racing dirt, and we've done a heck of a lot better, so uh, it, it's, it's been really fun. Well, give us a little bit of insight what you think about the Iowa Speedway. It seems like you, you mentioned just a little earlier ago, I mean, you've had some good luck out there. Um, finishing third and starting on the pole and everything. What, what's your uh, view of Iowa? I like it. It's a it's, it's a fun track. It races like a big race track. You know, I, I just coming off my first mile and a half in a nationwide car. What it reminded me was at Chicago Land was a big Iowa. Um, 
fun and geometry is between the two, but I think the base difference is the tire. Was there a big horsepower difference too, Andrew? Yeah, this my car. This my car is around six hundred, and uh, Canon car is a little under that. But right there. Oh really? They had that? I didn't realize they had that much power. Motor. I, I think that uh, the Metroid motors are definitely more responsive, mm. but they are very, very much uh, momentum, momentum based, kind of like a Canon car. So. But it's, it's, it's hard to compare because the feel is so different that you don't even put motor into play. Now, didn't you just recently test a uh, cup car? Yeah, I tested the, my first real test, I guess, was a straight line test uh, down in Cape Canaveral a couple weeks ago. And that was really fun. It was just a straight uh, line run that I made down on the roadway, and then I'd come back and the guys would, would take all the uh, data that they collected, and we did that for three days. That was kind of cool to get um, good with the test team and, and being a cup car, being in a race car driving. That was, that was a lot of fun. And then the other, the other day, I went to uh, Nashville and, and ran some laps in a, in a cup car. So straight line was really cool, but then the actual being a cup car for the first time on a real race track was a dream come true. I was talking to my mom on the phone before I, before I uh, strapped in, and me and I almost got emotional just thinking that this is actually happening. You know, just the fact of being in a RCR cup car and, and making laughs was just a really, really surreal moment that I'll never uh, forget. All right, now I got a question for you. This is this is a big one. That uh, I saw a picture of you the other day. Uh oh. I'm this, not gonna say nothing, but is that, that the pink thing you that, that girlfriend of yours got you in that pink thing you had on the other day. I want to, I want you to give me an explanation behind it because it kind of scared me. Yeah, you know that's been brought up a lot. <laughs> you don't say. Yeah. Right. Jack doesn't like pink. Uh, Got some crap on that at the shop. And, uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna tell who. I, I'm not gonna say who told me about it to go find it. Do we have a? Oh, <laughs> and we're showing the picture now. <laughs> well, the good thing in the picture is I don't feel uh, giving a face that. <laughs> lost, lost some bet apparently. That must oh, have been what the deal is. That must have been a heck of a bet you lost. I gotta say that. Well, it was, it was a bet over Twitter, and, <laughs> and sure enough, the uh, the fans, they followed. <laughs> <laughs> and then we bring it up tonight. <laughs> I keep trying to get Jack on the bet, but I can't get him to bet anything. But, but look, but look. And, and when he loses, he's not honor it anyway. But look, but look, I'm going to tell you, uh, Nick Harrison kind of liked that picture. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was probably the first one to give him. So, a so when you see Nick again, uh, I don't know if you've seen him since yeah, then. Yeah, I'm sure he's gonna give you some uh, hard time about it. Yeah, well, he I went and saw him after the national test. He was uh, he was no deep in some some numbers, so he was getting ready for this weekend, and he was not in the mood to. Uh, <laughs> I got lucky there. <laughs> but it ain't over yet. I tell you, he don't forget about it. I know. You know, this girl kind of made. I uh, that she was was pretty uh, breathable, lightweight. Felt like I was. <laughs> wait a minute! Wait a minute, Kale. Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! <laughs> hey, Kale, we don't need to go there. <laughs> oh Lord! Hey. I'm, th you know, you know, I'm, hey, I, I held you. He just owned it. I, I, I held you in very high regard, and you just start talking about how breathable these clothes are. I mean, I probably won't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> the experience, you know. Hey, hey right. I bet if somebody bets you if you win a race, a nationwide race, you'd wear it again. Oh, I'd put it on a big. <laughs> <laughs> put it on just to get around. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm going too. Yeah, that, that would that would be a no no brainer. Well, <laughs> look, when I come back to Charlotte, I'm I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a picture. Are you gonna want to sign it? And I'm gonna get you to sign it. <laughs> <laughs> From Breezy. Okay, then you're gonna put it right here. 
And we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna put it right here where everybody can see it. Cause I was down there the other day. I wish I'd have thought about it. You were probably in the shop that day. Oh yeah, I'm there every day. Uh, give everyone a fine picture of a dress. Just Bring it on over. Okay. <laughs> all right, man. Hey, well, uh, we definitely want to want you to go ahead and give a shout out to all your sponsors and uh, you know be able to credit them with uh, helping you this year. So uh, go ahead and. And give if us anybody needs any needs a, a good wheel man, he's he's available. Exactly. Or a good sponsor that could buck up a couple more races, huh? We're actually a sponsor this weekend. Just a we got a plain white and red race car, so To, um, I know she has a. Doesn't she have a business? Yeah, she got her boutique there in Concord. Yeah, I, I, see, I know these things. And, and have, have you been shopping? Boutique. And you should yeah. get her. Wait a minute now. <laughs> you couldn't get him. You couldn't get her to put a sponsorship on there for free. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's already a model. I mean, you're doing the modeling right. I mean, you know, but, but, but you, you need to get a sponsorship out of that deal. Yeah, I know. I gave her a little PR by putting all on the dresses. <laughs> you ain't kidding. You got. You did a whole lot of PR there, man. Yeah. yeah, really. Yeah, we got to just uh, lay a light bulb off. But I appreciate that. We need to get that Emily's Mama Beast boutique on the foot of this. <laughs> and look, and you can even put a picture of you up there wearing her clothes. get back to what you were doing and we appreciate your time. Good luck, man. Hey, take care, bud. Me out. You guys have a good uh, evening. I'm going to get you back now, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. I think he's going to get you back. <laughs> I'll tell you what, what, I mean, what a good kid, though. Yeah. I mean, he has done really well. He's from West Virginia. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And he can drive. And it's a family-owned team. I mean, he was right yeah. about last year. He, they had a place over there in Morsel Sports Park. And uh, we were talking uh, one of the tracks, and he was telling me he lived above the uh, the race shop, yep. and they were committed twenty four seven. I mean, you know, on that car, so it's it's really good to be able to see them. You know, he was the in Woody's old shop. Oh, okay. Next yeah. caller's online. Curtis, who, we got? who is it? Curtis Hughes. Curtis Hughes. Let's talk racing. Hey guys, how are y'all? Good, good. Is this Curtis? Yes, sir. So how, how many did people fit in the stands at Langley Speedway? Because that place was packed. A lot. I'd have to say close to 6,000. Was it 6,000? They, all but how they, they were parked down at 7-Eleven. Yeah. They I mean, were parked, it was crazy. Uh, when uh, we pulled out of there, they were parked uh, almost down towards Bojangles. And uh, it was a good crowd. They, stood, they stayed there. Uh, we left a little before 11. But uh, I think Roger stayed a little longer. But how many people ended up staying around? I mean, did the majority of the people stay around, Curtis, for uh, the late model and throughout? I have to, we had people in the stands until the end of the wedding break, which was around 3 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what, we really got surprised. We got that one rain shower, and then all of a sudden, it looked like y'all guys got the track all cleared up, and uh, these guys were all ready to go racing, and then all of a sudden, the rain and buckets of it started coming down, didn't it? Yeah, uh, we were watching the radar, and, you know, that storm wasn't on our radar at all until about five minutes before it hit. You know, so it's just like someone wanted to slow us down a little bit more and make sure, do their best to make, see if we couldn't run the anti heat, but we were definitely going to do it for everybody. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, the fans really stayed around, um, entertained themselves for about two hours while the track was getting dried, and uh, Bill and them really put together, or, you know, your whole team put together a heck of a, an effort to get that race in on Saturday night, early Sunday morning. 
Oh yeah, you know, it's definitely a team effort, and we couldn't have done any of it without the city of Hampton and everything that they've done for us to make sure that event was as good as it has been. And to see how much it's grown, you know, it wouldn't have been possible without their help. Now, now y'all had, what, 37 cars. Is that the biggest field at Langley Speedway? Yeah, talking to everybody that's been around Langley Speedway for a very long time, up until that point, the largest late mile field anybody can remember is 34. Really? Wow. I know you used to cut them off back in the day when, when we were out there. Yeah. I can't remember what the cutoff was. but that, last I remember was 32. They cut it down to 32. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm glad Bill just said, hey, because there's enough, there's enough room to, to run, I'd say, 40 cars. I thought that was two or more. I thought that was a heck of a move. I mean, these guys travel. Um, mm -hmm. You know, someone from Danville, Virginia, it doesn't sound that far, but you start carrying a trailer and everything, and you're, you're traveling three and four hours. Definitely, it was great for Bill to step up and say, everyone's going to start the race. Yeah. So I'll tell really you what, awesome. the only problem, I was in the pace truck, so when yeah. it came time to get out in front of the leader, the last and guy wants it pitted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when uh, you get out there and the, end of, the person that was the last place was sitting basically off the front nose of the truck, really? once they were all strung, strung out a little bit but one behind each other instead of side by side. It, it was definitely weird when we were watching it from, from the pits on the outside. Because usually you watch the leader go by and about the field has gone by, but you still had to keep a watch to make sure their cars were coming. Because yeah. I mean, they were just kept coming. It was crazy. It was a great. It was a great show, and I would say it's probably got to be the biggest Hampton Heat event that y'all had. I think by far it's definitely you know it's grown ever since we started in 2008, and you know it's just I think the past couple of years everybody has seen how well we like the track runs the race and how well. Uh, the city here just supports the event, and since Dayton and Matt won, a lot more out-of-town people feel that they have a chance, too. Mm -hmm. how, ma how many other people come from other racetracks? Because I know Bill was saying... Um, South Boston was represented, Motor Mile, uh, uh, all the way down to NASCAR came, uh, Caraway, uh, you know, all, all I mean, That's places. a big deal. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. Uh, we had track representatives from all over the place come and help them, you know, just to see our event and everything, and that's been a lot to us because it shows that they respect what we're doing up here. But, um... That or they want to start doing it at their place <laughs> because they want to see how well, how successful it's been. And what, what do you think made it so much bigger this year? I'd have to say that everybody feels like they have a chance, and, you know, the staff here does everything we can to make sure everybody that shows up at Langley Speedway leaves with a happy experience. And I think that uh, the people who have come realize that, and they share the word off to all their buds. I, I thought it was funny. I was at the concession. I, I was at the concession stand getting some food on one of the rain delays, and and the lady in front of me, she was with one of the teams. She's she like, bought your meal? No, she wasn't that nice. Right. Well, her husband didn't buy me a meal, but they were like, they were like seafood. Where? What racetrack can you get seafood at? They're like Langley <laughs> Speedway. I'm like, well, it helps when the owner owns, you know, has a seafood business. So. Mm -hmm. But those are kind of neat things that separate Langley Speedway from other racetracks. It was, and it's uh, good seafood. I mean, oh, it's, yeah, it's not like definitely. when you go to some concession stand and you get some junk. Mm -hmm. This is good stuff. Well, Curtis, you know, one of the things is with the Touring Series coming in now, Langley Speedway, like K&N and the Southern Mods, all NASCAR sanctioned. Uh, guys look forward to coming because Bill puts on, you know, a little thing for us and everything and all of his staff and people just love that seafood. So you're right. How many tracks do you get to go to that you get seafood at? But uh, it was it was really cool, Curtis, mm -hmm. to be able to see people at South from South Boston, Southern National, all That's these track right. owners taking part and being able to come in and see this big event that Langley sponsored. Oh yeah, it was it was. We even made it a relaxing show for them, you know, because they didn't have to worry about anything. It wasn't right. their race. Exactly. Maybe they weren't worried about the rain, were they? <laughs> They're probably laughing. They right? were just glad it wasn't their racetrack that night. Right. I spent time talking to Kathy Rice and. Mr. Diaz and everybody from South Boston, Southern National, they loved it because it was the first time they got to go to the racetrack at a big event like that and not have to worry about anything in a while. Right. So. Well, uh, like you said, there was probably 6,000. Now, is that including what you've got uh, up in the sky boxes and everything else? I mean, you probably didn't take account for that. You're right. You know, we really have no idea how many people we're actually at this event. I mean, we ran out of parking spots before 
I'd say before seven o'clock. Oh, yeah. definitely. They, they were actually coming in the pits and asking all the crew members who drove that were parked in the parking lot to bring the cars inside the pits so they could get more parts. I thought one of the good things that y'all did, Curtis, was uh, y'all had uh, traffic parking people to help you try to park your cars and get them in a good manner out there so you could squeeze as many in. And I thought that was really a great idea. We try to do that for all of our big events, especially since the Hampton Heat last year when we realized that we do have the potential to run out of parking lot. Well, so we so try to make every attempt possible at making sure that parking's in order and then everybody can get a good seat. Do y'all do did y'all do the valet parking this week weekend too? No, we didn't. Okay. I, was gonna say I that. thought it was really something last year. Uh, I was at uh, another event and I was following y'all on Facebook and actually saw someone say that they went to Langley Speedway for the Hampton Heat, couldn't find parking, went home and took a cab. <laughs> I was like, man, yeah. that, that is when you really got something going on where the cab pulls up. So that's awesome. Well, uh, what do you see for 2015 um, with the Hampton Heat, and what do y'all uh, look forward to for next year? Well, obviously we want to see it grow, and we want to see our relationship with the city of Hampton continue to grow as well. Um, we just want to, every year we hope for bigger and better things, and with the event being as big as it was this year, you know, we just want to top it once again. I think y'all keep on growing. Uh, Curtis, y'all are going to have to th think about investing in some temporary bleachers or something. Yeah, you know, we have a bunch of things in the works, hopefully, and we, the goal is to make 2015 even better than 2014 and, you know, make it an even better show and have make sure there is no possible complaints about it. <laughs> I got you. Well, what does the rest of the season look like for y'all? I guess y'all got one more major event, uh, as in um, touring series coming in, and how many more events do y'all have left? Um... We, the last event that we have on our calendar will be October 4th, but that's our Day of Destruction event. Okay. So we race every weekend up until then, except for Richmond weekend. Gotcha. we got a concert coming up. Yeah, y'all got the, uh, uh, was it Bryce? We have a Lee Bryce concert that's also featuring Daniel Bradbury on August 14th. And that's going to be extremely big for the racetrack as well, because that's a huge event that we're going to help be able to bring exposure out to the racetrack as well with. Now, is that y'all putting the stage on the front stretch and people are sitting in the stands? How is that going to be set up? Uh, as far as I know, the stage will be set up in three and four and shoot down the pit road. Okay. That'll be really pretty good. It looks like uh, Langley Speedway is trying to uh, develop itself in more than just a racetrack. I mean, having car shows, of course, the wild, wacky Wednesdays, racing, of course, and now we'll get into the concert scene. Well, you know, Chuck Holly's a promoter and putting on events is what he does best, so I don't know what he has up his sleeves or anything, but, you know, he's one of the best at making sure this racetrack stays alive, so I'm going to let him do what he does best. Didn't, uh, so I thought years ago there was, they did, did a few concerts. I think it was Kathy Matea or something. We were supposed to have it down there in, like, 2004, 2005. Maybe it was 2004. And that was probably Rain before he was in. born. That, oh, probably before <laughs> Curtis was. Uh, but, um... Yeah, it, they had, Chuck was there, Chuck put everything together, and then all of a sudden a, a big rain came in and they had to move the concert. But uh, mm -hmm. hopefully y'all end up having great weather, man, and a great turnout. And um, Can we get some great tickets? <laughs> I wonder how many times they've been asked. No, that. I'm sure a bunch. for $50 a piece. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how many people that, that come to the, the races there has asked for tickets? I bet everybody there about... You know, one thing you gotta say, since your son's been in the race, how many times have you been hit up for free tickets? Every time I've heard I got people that used to, get them used to kick my butt in high school, but they'll get in touch with me on Facebook for free tickets. I told a guy, I said, you stole about $300 from me back in uh, the day, and with interest, yeah, I'll get you free yeah, tickets for $900. Sure, so you got 300 bucks out of you. I mean, you ain't a small guy. I, I was small. I'm still small. Well, to Jack, we, we need we need to talk to this guy here. Y'all sitting here talking about the dream. Curtis man. is a young guy. He's used to it. <laughs> so, Curtis, do you plan on racing anymore? Because you used to race carts and stuff, right? Yeah, I, I'm still running modifieds out here every now and then when I get a chance to. Are you going to get back in one of these wing champs again? <laughs> you know, probably not. <laughs> I do, do not you blame think? you a bit, does it? You got. <laughs> If you got Scott Allen out there, I would not. <laughs> that's the reason why I heard they were having the day of destruction. They were going to turn him loose. 
<laughs> it, it was a rape fest out there last last night or the other night. Oh yeah. You know, I've been around the Windchamp division probably as long as anybody out here at Langley Speedway and everything, but, you know, it's something that I've never really drove. I've only run it about probably two or three times. But uh, it's just never been something that I've really raced a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I tell you what, man. Uh, anything you want to tell us in closing? And uh, we've already talked about the concert, but anything you want to bring up? Um, just that the, we have the Modified Tour Race coming up again. Uh, at the end of August, and that's going to be our next big show. Um, and that we just want to thank everybody for making uh, the 2014 edition of the Hampton Heat as big as it was, and hope that everybody enjoyed themselves, and that we look forward to making it even better next year. I tell you what, we appreciate yeah, you coming on the show. city of Hampton, of course, for making it all possible for us. Definitely. Well, we appreciate you coming on the show. We look forward to speaking to you more through uh, at the uh, year towards the end of the season. All right, thank you all. All right, take Thanks care, Curtis. Bye-bye. So we got Peyton. Peyton I, cannot believe, I cannot believe they gave a whole a whole weekend, with, a whole race just for you. Day of destruction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a big event. Yeah, they, they really, hey, it really is a big event. The, yeah, they, they, they packed the stands on that. Have you been out there for that? No, I That's, have, I have, it's awesome. It's, it's like when they used to do the Enduros. I mean, yeah. you got a hard time. I wish they would bring those back. Well, you I do have good. an enduro on that, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they, they had that last good. Saturday night. But I mean, <laughs> it's nowhere near what it no, used to be. And it ain't hundred cars like it used to be. But they Dude, that they was put, crazy. Uh, a couple of years, I was in town and uh, they put barrels in the turns <laughs> with soapy water. And you'd be going around and you hit that barrel, and all of a sudden, soapy water would be all over one and two, and cars would be all over the place. That's awesome. Yeah. It's the best ten dollars you'll ever spend. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's so, crazy. Definitely got to try it. And that's October fourth. Let's talk racing. How you doing tonight, Peyton? Everything's going well. How about you guys? We're having a blast, if you've been listening. <laughs> Brother, he's probably still tired from only getting home until 6 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning. Well, he had a long drive. No, he went to the hotel. Uh, I gotcha. So, what would you think of the racing the other night, Peyton? Our, uh, our day started at Friday morning at <laughs> 9 o'clock when we got the motor mile. And finally got in bed by about 6.15 on Sunday morning after... <laughs> and to the uh, the Langley 1200. It seemed like we were there all day long. <laughs> and that's right. Well, what'd you think of uh, them starting 37 cars, and how did y'all's day turn out, and what'd you think of the whole weekend? You know, every time we get an opportunity to come, come over to Langley, Bill Mullis, Chuck, everybody is just very first class the way they run the whole show over there, and, and they're they're nothing but nice, and they're very friendly to have us there. Uh, it was a long day with the open fest for a couple hours there in the morning, and having to be there to go through tech. But uh, Shane and everybody does a good job with tech. They don't worry out too much on little stuff, and, and that's what I like about it. You know, they just they're common sense racers, and um, Bill knows what the fans want. And, and any time that a late model stock race can go race in front of six or seven thousand people, it is unbelievable because that's what we need. You know, short track racing needs people. People in the stands, and definitely. that's what we got Saturday night. Well, I definitely, uh, they, they did everything they could to get that race in. A lot of people, as we've talked about throughout the uh, show today, I mean, racing didn't start till after 11 o'clock. And uh, we just had Curtis on, who's uh, part of their PR group there at Langley, and he said majority of the fans were sticking around all the way up until the Legends race. Yeah, you know, we were out there doing the driver autograph session that moved uh, over to the grandstand area. Um, at, you know, seven or eight o'clock there, well, way after the race was supposed to start, and um, you know the fans were actually leaving, and I heard one of them saying, "Hey, we're going home to change clothes. We'll be back when the rain quits." <laughs> right there. So um, you know, very pleased that we got in tonight. We got into racing. Uh, hats off to those guys for trying to run it, run it, and get the track dry because man, you know, Langley being so flat, it was kind of a cool night. We didn't have any help with with the water drying up. They had to do it all by hand. Everything that dried up was done um, by hand. We didn't have any help from Mother Nature to, to get dried up. So, um, And they had to do it twice. Yeah. Uh, you know, then during the race, they kept fighting a little bit of water coming in on the track off the turn through there. And that was a little bit of a headache because every time you look under somebody, you're picking up a rooster tail of water trying to get the traction to get grip to get by them. So that made it a little bit of a challenge. But Hey, at the end of the night, the fans got to see a good, good race. and got to see a green-white checker finish. And 
Um, you know, hats off to see, you know, the guys, they had a good car on that long. And, um, you know, at the end of the race, I felt like me and Matt Bowman both had good cars. You know, we, we came and um, me and Matt had two different setups, but at the end of the day, we were both pretty quick, and, and we were just pleased to go over there and be competitive. Yeah, I would say y'all were, because I, I, well, I mean, the first part of the race, I was like, Peyton ain't doing nothing, and then at the end, he just kept picking them off. Uh, I think you just rode for 100 laps and then come on to the last 100. I mean, is that kind of what you do, is just kind of save your stuff? You know, I mean, obviously, you got to survive. Well, we were in the top 10 in practice, I was really hoping for a better qualifying effort, but we just didn't get the, you know, didn't get the, the qualifying run that we needed there, and we ended up putting our stuff in a pretty big hole, and, um... We, we ended up, you know, I kind of just had to play strategy. It, it was, it's nice to say, yep, I waited, I saved tires, I drove to the front when it counted, but, but that's not how it played out at all. The way it played out was, when you've got 37 of the best cars in the country there, mm -hmm. you're not going to just drive past them and drive your way to the front. Um, I was mired up at lap 100, I was mired up in, you know, 15th position or whatever it was, and everybody was running single file, I couldn't get by anybody with cautions we had that, the cautions were taking a lot of laps, so they run off a lot of laps on the clock. But at the end of the day, you know, nobody nobody fell off that bad. And when you're running eight in a row, you know, when the fifth place man is in front of your line and you're running as hard as you can and he's running as hard as he can, and there's just nobody there, you know, that, that's going to make a mistake because there's such good drivers there. So um, I had to play the cone a few times. I knew I had a really good car when they dropped the flag. To start the race, I knew I had a car that was capable of getting up front and being competitive, and I just had to wait my time and, and be patient and pick the right lines. My dad spots for me. So he's trying to call the line and figure out which way to go each time. And you know, one time we have to stay on the inside and gain a few spots. Several times we pulled to the outside and gain a few spots, and things just played out just right to get up there and have a good solid top five finish to just show everybody the kind of car we had. Now, did the, did the track change much from? Earlier in the day when you're all practicing, when the rain washed a bunch of the rubber and stuff off? You know, I told everybody that it was definitely going to change a lot. I told everybody that it was going to, you know, make for different characteristics of the handling. And, and honestly, it did. It didn't change a lot. It gained some grip <laughs> overall. And, and it was a little bit of a fresher, cleaner track to run on. But at the end of the day, Langley is such a hard track to get around. You've really got to have a good balance in your car. If you don't have that balance, the weather isn't going to change and make you good or bad. But you've been coming down uh, to Langley for the Hampton Heat for a couple of years. I mean, what's your uh, view of everything? I mean, it's growing more and more each year as we've talked to Langley uh, as PR team. It looks like it's going to be even bigger next year for 2015. Yeah, I know they've got some good things in the works right now. I know they've been talking about changing the different, you know, the way they do things. And, and it's a work in progress. But this, this Hampton Heat is starting to take a little bit of traction. And, and it's pulling drivers from all over. You know, before, when three years ago I came over here and drove Mark Wirtz's car when he had a broke ankle, and uh, Matt Bowman won it that night out of our shop, but, but I drove Mark's car then, and, you know, we, we were outsiders. We were we were from Danville three hours away, and we were the outsiders. Now, you know, you're getting drivers out of North Carolina, South Carolina, all over, because right. it's such a quality race. You know, the, the, the first is good enough, and it's drawing in competitors, and, you know, I feel like with Matt winning a couple of years ago and I won last year, I felt like that showed everybody that, hey, an outsider can come to Langley and win because, quite honestly, it's so hard to get around when you've got guys like, uh, you know, the Waltz and, and Falk and, and all of those guys that that are so honed in to what's going on there at that particular track. Um, you know, that makes it tough. And, and if you're an outsider, you're like, hey, I don't want to, I don't want to go over there and, and race against those guys that race there every week, but. I think everybody's eyes have been opened up a little bit right now that, hey, we can come there, we're going to get treated fair when we're doing it, that the people are going to appreciate us being there, and we're going to put on a good show and have a competitive car. Right. I'm really starting to see some drivers come from all over now, and, and, and they're seeing that, hey, we can be competitive at Langley Speedway. How, how many 37 car late model fields have you been a part of? You know, just the big shows, just the Martinsville's, you know, you know, Motor Mile earlier this year we had 33 cars, but, um, you know, for the most part, 37 cars on Langley is all you want. Yeah. 
But I think next year you're probably going to even see, you know, 40 cars out there, you know, trying to qualify for this race. But it really shows and means a lot, I know, to them, for y'all all to come together, like you said, you know, coming from another track and you, you came down here and, you know, last year and, and really walked them. And I tell you, that, that says a lot when outsiders can come out and be able to uh, put on a good show like that. And I, the fans love it. You know, Wayne has got something special this year with it. Last year, the track had a power grip. It was very flat. This year, it's starting to get the character back good again. It's starting to get the old Langley feel yeah. to the asphalt. Yeah, it was paved last yeah, it year. It was paved last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Was the first year? Yep. Yep. And you, you're seeing the, uh, the the second groove come in very good right now. It never really came in Saturday night. But we were there racing the last points race that they had. And the outside groove was the way to go. You moved up, you could hold off a guy or even pass a guy right. on the outside. So... I was really hoping it would have came in a little better than it did Saturday night, but a lot of the rubber had been washed off of it, and it just, with no more green flag laps than we had Saturday night, we just couldn't get down enough rubber up there to make it a better way. Yeah, I think it was like, what, 115 green flag laps that were ran? 105 caution laps. It was 105 caution mm -hmm. laps? Cool. That's that's what I heard. I'm not, that's not official. That's just what I yes. read on some social media site. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna tell you, 37 cars. That's just mm -hmm. awesome. And I know you know Peyton, you're used to you know 30, 33 up there at Motor Mile, which is a totally different setup. I mean, Motor Mile is a beautiful track. Don't want to take nothing away from them, but uh, 37 cars, flat racing down at Langley Speedway. Hey, absolutely. You know we're gonna to go to South Boston this weekend. We've had a couple of nights there this year where we had you know 20, 25 cars, and they've been drawing exceptional car count, but. There's been a few weeks when we had 12 or 13 as well. Yeah. Right now, short track racing is is in need of more cars and that sort of thing. We're putting on better racing now than we ever have. I feel like because the cars are so competitive. But the uh, the state of the union right now is still not where it needs to be to get cars out there. And you know, you know, we need the, the sponsorship. We need the media. We need you guys out helping us push and grow and and, and grow our brand and what we're doing here with short track racing right now. So. Every little bit helps. And I feel like with the way that town of Hampton has got involved in this race, you're going to see bigger and better things year after year after year with, with Langley Speedway, not just for the Hampton Heat, but for everything they're doing. But, you know, that's one thing, you know, uh, traveling around like I've done to different racetracks, I've never really seen a city get behind a track as much as I've seen the city of Hampton, which says a lot for Langley management and everything yeah, else. I think it's really Bill great. really put that together or something. Pushed hard. Yeah. Which is cool. Well, how, did, how was your breakfast at IHOP? Well, I've been eating cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> And it, would have, and it would have been pretty good, but overall, my whole experience in Hampton this weekend was a good one. And uh, the, the 24 hours that I was there was uh, everybody was very polite and a lot of southern hospitality. Yeah, well, I'm glad you had a hotel because we were there eating too, and we talked uh, to them a little bit after we after were leaving. But that had to be a heck of a track to come all the way from Motor Mile. Yeah. Did you run? Didn't you run double races at Motor Mile? Yes, we, we raced there, we walked out of tech, we got our car loaded up at 2.15, and we jumped in the truck and we pulled into Langley at 6.50. On the <laughs> That's real true racers right yeah. there. That's yeah, you, were, you were determined to get there. Now, you're going to South Boston this weekend. What's it going to take That's to beat Lee Pulley? Well, you know, Lee this year has been very competitive. Obviously, he's been busting off some wins, but at the end of the day, we've been holding our own with him. Uh, Motor Mile Saturday night, he, he kind of knocked me up the track to, to get the win. I finished second to him by about two feet. No. And uh, you know, we beat him a time or two this year. He, he's on his A game right now. He's running very strong, but I feel like we're getting there, too. Um, you know, we're trying some different things in the front end week after week, and we're constantly working, trying to get better, just like everybody is. But um, we, we have been uh, on, on the on the brink of busting off some wins and, and having a better year than we have, but we... You know, one step forward, two steps back sometimes some of the stuff we're trying right now. So we're just looking for that consistency going into the end of the year here. Um, with Martinsville coming up and some of the bigger races, we're gonna we're gonna just try to keep keep working as hard as we can and uh, right now, you know, we're leading the track points to South Boston and I'm very thankful for that. And I gotta just kinda protect what I've got and try to get better at the same time without being too risky. How many other tracks are you gonna be running the rest of the year? Going basically work, you know, 
do all your time in South Boston, or are you going to do some more traveling around? Well, right now I'm leaving it going to South Boston and Motor Mile, so I've got to go back to Motor Mile for the two races. They have the two nights of racing, which is four races left. So we've got to just be smart and consistent right now and just kind of do the best we can do, but take what the track gives us, take what the competition gives us, and, and try to point the race right now. Um, South Boston actually has uh, five more nights of clean race. So we've got ten more races there, race. and we've got four more motor miles. So that's going to take up the rest of my summer, to be quite honest with you. So after the after the, the the regular seasons at Motor Mile in South Boston, you will be going to Martinsville and uh, probably Southern National. Well, we're going to be going to Martinsville for sure. Um, that's the third leg of the Triple Crown, and right now that is uh, that's a lot of prestige in winning that thing. And we got to just stay on our A game and, and and have a good solid run at Martinsville. Last year we had a great great car, but we just didn't have any luck. So if we can find a little bit of luck there this year. Uh, and have a better run. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But, you know, as far as the Southern National thing goes, last year my crew chief, Tony Keene, run it. We uh, we got up in the top ten and ended up finishing seventh. And uh, probably just going to go help him again this year. Uh, he, he's got a knack for getting around that place pretty good. And we're going to uh, spend a little time racing with him here. Once my season kind of wraps up, I'm going to try to help him run some way off week to care away. It might even rain with him one night. We'll see how things go. Well, definitely, uh, we want you to go ahead and uh, give a shout out to all your sponsors that make this uh, possible for you to be able to do this every weekend. Absolutely, guys. We um very fortunate this year. Dan will probably have came on board. I've got a nice thunder truck I drive around town all the time here. And, uh, Dan will probably has been a big supporter of ours. You can see him at danwillprobably.com. I've got St. Lawrence Radiology that's been with us for a couple of years now. They've been very good to us. Along with that, we've got AR Bodies and Banks Racing Engines. Uh, a lot of the guys over at Langley run Banks Engines, and we're very appreciative of that. Uh, Billy, Billy was there at the track this weekend, and uh, just you know, I feel like we got a good combination right now with our Hitchcock car and, and the Banks Engine and AR Bodies. I feel like that those guys are racers just like we are, and we're trying to get it done and, and get some get some stats in the book this time of year. Well, man, we definitely appreciate you coming on the show. We look forward to you coming back down here to Langley and uh, racing uh, a little bit more. Absolutely, guys. Thank you for having me on, and you guys have a good night. Stay out of trouble, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, good take night. care, Peyton. Talk to you later, Peyton. Hey. He must know you. He said stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm coming to his track this weekend, so... And Jack's coming to see you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, he's going he's to use the excuse he, he comes to see, see Peyton. Peyton. That's it. That's all right. He's the excuse I come to see anybody. But <laughs> Okay, can we put a bet together? What, what, what I'm worried about is this hat you got on. What? It says afflicted mm -hmm. war heroes. Yeah. Now, Not, wouldn't it be affected? <laughs> it depends. Okay, we're getting into, we're getting into something serious here. Mm -hmm. Roger's like, depends. Well, he's that, got the pen. I hope he <laughs> You heard me the other time. <laughs> hey, hey, Jack, I do have a pair for you. <laughs> I'm just, hey, I will, he said it, I didn't. I think that was really good that you brought that up. That wasn't scripted either. The other night we had the same question. You were wearing a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and tell us a little bit about them. Yeah. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them yet, honestly, but they, they what they do is they help uh, people, obviously, in the military that have been affected by the war or so forth. And they... I didn't realize how much the government doesn't take care of mm -hmm. or help some of those guys get to certain places or, you know, whatever the case is. Yeah, take care of them in general. And what they do is kind of fill the gap, mm -hmm. basically. Um, uh, I've got a friend of mine that's a SEAL, and, and he's been uh, working with them several times to go help some of those guys or their families that are left behind. What the government doesn't take care of, they step in and help fill that gap. So they, they want a, some presence on the East Coast, so we're, we're in some discussions with those guys, so hopefully we might have some really big things coming. We're yeah. talking champ carts with big sponsors going places. Uh, they might want something bigger. See? You well, never know. With who? Scott Allen's going right. to the top. <laughs> you attend the next round of meeting. You might be going cup race. Would you wear a shirt then? Would you wear? You would not. We gave you a shirt. Not, He's already got one. <sighs> cup racing, yeah. <laughs> it's like Let's cups. just say truck. <laughs> truck racing. Let's see, yeah. Roger, Roger's and got up and went out of here. 
And he's gonna come going. And he's gonna come back with something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I see what it makes coming. you think that because he left the other day and went and got on the phone with Brandon. Let me see how that, here he comes. <laughs> Is it something stupid? <laughs> Well, uh -oh. I don't know, maybe not. Okay, okay. well, we'll leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, you no, you don't start to something out. For you or something? No, we just do stuff was up. But... Oh, I had to go. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. All right, a yeah. um, couple of things, you know, talking about the afflicted war heroes thing and talking about the, the Veterans Administration and everything that goes on with those. Me being a veteran, I don't go near the VA. None of the hospitals I'd rather be hitting, regular doctors. And there's too many stories I've heard from too many people that have been to these places. And I hate to say that, but unfortunately, it's a sad state that it is. Okay, other thing. Were any of y'all watching Formula One racing over the weekend? No. 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 Did you hear the thing about uh, when uh, Lewis Hamilton and Rosberg, Rosberg was uh, behind Lewis and they kept telling Lewis to pull over, let him go by? Mm -hmm. Lewis said, no way. And what did he do? He wound up beating him in the end. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's one thing that, I mean, everybody, I don't say everybody loves team Formula orders, 1, but, but Formula 1 is obviously big, is. but I hate the team order deal. Yep. I mean, take the team to a whole new level, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, I, mean, I would not yeah, want one of my I'll be, honest with, I'll be honest with you, there was, there was a lot of talk in Charlotte Monday when I was down there, and I don't know whether it was, I don't think it was the team itself doing the talking, but a lot of people would... I mean, I heard, it on the, restart? I heard it on the, you know, I heard it on the radio, I heard it everywhere while I was down there, that everybody kind of thought there was going to be some team orders there with no, the case I of K. think so. Because, mm. well, I know there's not going to be, and I, I, I know you that. You how people speculate. But I'm talking about how people were talking things. about it. Why didn't Jeff back off and let Casey win? Because he would have been in the chase. Because that's not his But that's not, that's not what's going to happen. That's not, you know. If it was for second... Somebody might be willing to fall to third. There's nobody going to give them a win. But I don't care. It's like Mr. Henry, it's like Mr. Henry said on, T, on the radio was, I don't want, I, I, I'm not going to give team orders like that. No, as long no. as they, as long as they're out there racing, I don't, whichever car comes home gets the win. But you touch but you but, a little upset. Yeah. But, but he said, if they wreck each other, then, then we have a problem. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's costing him money. Yeah. yeah. Now you're hitting. But I mean, Casey Henry was upset. Lot. I was surprised how upset he how how upset he was yeah. after the race. Well, there was there was a couple things going on there. One was being was Casey was was trying to save gas. He was cutting the car off, falling way back, and Jeff was trying to push him along, trying to get him to come on. Look, let's go. Yeah. In two ways that that worked. It, you know, he wanted him to keep up. But second, it also helps run him out of gas. Right. Right. You know, but but. And I mean, for Casey he got, to say, Casey got mad about that. Well, I mean, I understand you mad because you lost. I mean, and he was just mad. feel like that. Yeah, yeah. just that. I mean, over it, it, it was, Casey. He but was, he was not like NASCAR let him control the start. NASCAR didn't let him. Oh yeah, control yeah. The that was the other thing I was getting to. That you know, he made the comment that NASCAR let him. He was just yeah, mad. I think he just, he just that, said. So the whole thing stems from everybody knows Jeff is is terrible on restarts, and he pulled off the restart of his life on that last. Well, but you, but you know what? I mean, I watched it earlier. He was like this to Casey going across the flag stand. So I mean, he ain't like he was up here. He was here. He drove it in the corner, and then who was who was third there on that restart? Got under Kate. Oh, Kyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's really what slowed his momentum down. And then he just kind of fell back. Plus, he was about out of gas. And, and, he, he did and it was just a situation that he, he didn't created for his or they created for themselves. He didn't make it to the end. So that you know. He ran out of gas for him, so it, it, yeah, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. He ran out three or four. It was, I mean, it was the last, 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 last And last then lap. he fell further back in the pack we were talking earlier, so. I mean, I'm was he was like fifth. No, he was back a little bit further than fifth. Oh, was he? Really? Yeah. Well, I tell you what, we'll, we'll find out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, but those guys have stuff. struggled, though. I mean, those guys, they've been fast at times, and it, but they it, haven't it, really run real well. It was really funny that I was there first thing Monday morning in the 524 shop. Right, and that's their team shop. That's the team shop. And I made the comment to Lee as we were walking around. I said, you, know, you kind of feel a little a little tension in here. <laughs> he said, no, we're all one team. And I, no. No, one of you won and one of you lost. <laughs> <laughs> something, something that it just, it just had, that, had that feeling there that, you know, okay. What do you do? You think Casey feels a lot of pressure? I mean, three After. of your oh, teammates, yes, yes. You, the, the whole rest of the team's in, but you. Yourself. And then you got this. this and kid you got Elliot. Elliot. Yeah, he's coming on strong. I mean, he's gonna. He's the real I mean, deal. 
He, Chase Elliott is the real deal. Now, what about his crew chief? Casey Nicole came went all the way back Junior's to sixth. crew chief next team. Went next back to where? Sixth. So, okay. So, he, okay, sixth. He, fin he finished a little bit better than what I thought. Yeah, I, I was thought thinking he was seventh or ninth. But, yeah, I mean, you got you got Chase Elliott coming along. I mean, he's got to add some prep. I don't even know if it'll be a two. Uh, I think you're going to get through 2015, 2016, but I mean, those he's guys going to have some He's going to have some cup starts next year. I would, yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised. Have, he's going to have some 2016. Cup but, um, but what about his crew chief? Is going to be Junior's crew chief next year. I mean, that's kind of big news. Uh, yeah. Gray guys? Yes. Yeah. Team engineer. But you got to look down the road. They're bringing, they're bringing him in there. When Casey goes cup. You think they're gonna pull him? They're gonna be, this well, there's gonna be this two years. Two years. Gonna be, there's gonna be some switching around. Hmm. I'd be surprised. No, no. I'm not, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But I see how they. I see how, how does it work inside their their shop? When you, I know you got the 48, uh, 88 shop, and then the 524 shop. Now those guys in the shop do everything on the car, preparing both cars Interior. to get to the shop. You have guys in there that do both. That right. work for both. Right. But then you have your guys that are specifically assigned assigned to the twenty four, some to the five. I mean, it's just that's just normal. You have to have a certain group. So what you'd end up having, and, and probably like a lot with y'all shop, you've got two or three guys that definitely work on your stuff, and then as a team, you've got other ones that come through and do this and that. So well, you got the finish like the fab guys though, in the finish fab to put right. the bodies on stuff like that. They work both sides. You got, but once they get into the into the main shop. And they start the teardown process of getting things ready for the getting ready to go to the track. You're basically dealing with 24 guys and five guys, right? And they're on two different sides of the of the shop. So you're gonna have to take your but best you, friend down there. But you know, it was amazing to me. It was really amazing. When I talked to him, I went. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got me more now. <laughs> but it's really funny. I bought. Lee told me one time before. He said. You got when you go between the two shops, the eight, the forty eight eighty eight and the five twenty four. He said when you walk between them, you're gonna see a difference. Well, I never thought that was a possible, you know. What you but it is different. The atmosphere is completely different. Well, I've heard, uh, yeah, I've heard that from some now, people. Wait, wait, now, from, are we talking about the house runs that shop down there? Yeah, that's, that's his. That's yeah. completely. That's he it. runs the he runs the eighty eight forty eight shop. He runs that place over there. And it is tension. I mean, we're not, I, I'm not going to say tension. Tension is not the, the pressure right. pressure is high. The expectations. expectations. Well, yeah. and the guys are not... They're, they're they over there. quite a few more people. Too. They're more they're, serious. They're more, tense, yeah, tense. they're more serious, tense stuff. It's more laid back over in the 524. Over in the 524, they're just laid back having a good... I mean, you know, they have music over there, but they don't have it on the other side. Jack and Mouse does not allow music. Wow. Yeah, he's so, very, very... I mean, you got to respect him for what he's done. Oh, he's, but somewhere he's, I think he would he would start to relax. But I guess you know some people just don't. I mean, you win all the championships. You want to hit that eight. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And and he is young enough oh, to he, do it. Him and Jimmy Johnson. Mm -hmm. What a great combination. Chemistry is all there. But do you think that that uh, would still the, the atmosphere would still be the same? Let's say that they hadn't got no wins. They're not in the chase. I mean, what was it like at the beginning of the year? Is it the same as it was from the beginning well, of the year till now? Lee says it's been the same way ever since. Ever he's since he's been there, I guess. that's the way that's it what is. I was wondering. He says over in his shop where he's at, everything is kind of you know the guys kind of go by and they talk and, and, and they carry on a conversation. Where over on the other side, when I walked in the door, nobody spoke. They were hard Everybody at work. was hard at work. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't get, you didn't get. When I was over in the five, in the uh, five twenty twenty four shop, I mean, they would stop what they were doing, come up and talk. And of course, they were all over Lee because People you know. You? Probably wants your autograph. <laughs> you know, Scott Allen. Did you ask? Did they ask about me? I bet you wanted to see You know what I'm saying? Well, that just went all the hell right here. <laughs> I just, I just, I put a little e brakes on him right here. He did a lot. We were having, a, we, were, we were having a decent conversation. <laughs> and I had to blow. Sorry, guys. But I thought it was funny. It was a good joke. Yeah, but right. tell us who is your best friend. I mean, he was over here hitting me. <laughs> boy. You'll take your best friend to the 524 shop. I really thought maybe y'all were getting along, and maybe I was the one being left out. If you come down to take it, no, you're, you're right out with I don't want shot. you to feel guilty. Both of you go get left out. <laughs> <laughs> you're screwed, guys. 
Oh. And I remember, I still remember the comment you made before he got here. So just remember. Well, well, what would he say? I'm an official. I can't show no favoritism. So if Scott gets here, I may be on his side, but I may be look, on your look, side. Look, he told me so for the first ten minutes, I might be on your side. <laughs> I did. I said, no. <laughs> he didn't stick to it, though, did he? No. <laughs> I haven't shown no favoritism. The minute you showed up, he shot me in the back of the head. <laughs> but that's no, cool. I just have that presence with people. And hey, me, Scott. Ask him what he told me when he first opened up the glasses. I said I won't yeah. say nothing bad about Roger, but that went out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Seven minutes later. Hey, you know what? If one week we come in and we're real nice and just mean to Brian, he won't know what the hell to do. <laughs> I'll probably get up and leave. <laughs> Let's give you something to eat. <laughs> They said, we said, don't talk about if that. If you ever go outside, your tires are flat. We have nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> we were right here. Y'all, I've watched y'all the whole time y'all been here. Now, him, now I'm worried because he's been outside. Yeah, but see, I come in late every time. So you you do. <laughs> now, <I'm thankful. laughs> I can't wait to Just do that just for the hell of it. <laughs> Thanks. I was trying. Never mind. I'm going to get my glasses. I'll probably sell these glasses when I get some tires. You better put them in there because Roger might tell somebody that they were stolen. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can thank Wiley X for some glasses. No, we, did that. we did that already. The ones that were here on time. Yeah, we, we are, you know. Yeah. Some, of us, some, of us are, some of us are who in Brian Morehouse's um, star status. <laughs> hey, you can't have the show without the show. Oh, now I'm on your side. Oh, we were doing pretty good until you showed up, really. <laughs> I, I gotta say, one guy said he was gonna watch the show tonight. What guy? Beach. He said he's my neighbor at the shop. He said, "Give me, give me a shout out." I said, "Okay." So we'll see if he really listened. Now, what's his name? What do you think? Scott Beach. Scott Beach. 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 Okay. All right. He comes for us. He comes for us. Same first name with him. <laughs> All right, well, Mr. We, Beach. I'm sorry. You have to deal with this. No, the guy <laughs> when you met at Mars was his son. Oh, okay. And he says it's his next door neighbor, so he's got to see him every day. And this is and this is the same. This is the guy that came up to me at Martinsville and said, <laughs> "I'll just tell him what he said." He said, "I like uh, y'all too. Y'all are something else on that show. The way y'all talk back and forth." <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's wrap it up. But you don't least, really do like each other. But, but, really. but at least you, you like yourself each other enough that if either one of you had a problem, you'd help. Well, yeah, 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 I would do that. I would do that. I'd do that for a lot of people. <laughs> Even for Scott. <laughs> so if you saw him broke down, which you'll never see that because he's a mechanic. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You forgot Martinsville. <laughs> you, just, you just went right over and forgot Martinsville when he had two vehicles to break down. <laughs> You're right. Uh, would you pick him up? Oh, yeah, I'd pick him up. Then you sit in the back of the yeah, truck? You'd be in the back of the truck. With, with the gate down. Him up. Because you, now he no, I, put, your, I would put it up because I'd be scared he'd fall out. <laughs> hey, if there's all the yeah. trucks around, he'd be in the back of the truck. But he wouldn't hurt gas bottles. Bottles. I mean, at Richmond. Huh? The drunken. Oh, yeah, Richmond. yeah. I had a drunk in my truck in Richmond. <laughs> it always carried him back to you. Uh, like him so much. Like him so much. Yeah. <laughs> Can't you imagine getting pulling up and over the back of your truck? Can you imagine being here? Yeah. <laughs> Where man? I can see him dropping him off Sunday morning at your house. <laughs> I asked him if he was an Allen, he said he knew Scott. <laughs> Not if he's that much of a drinker, I don't really drink. Oh, okay. Alright, we'll wrap it up till we'll next catch, week. We'll catch everybody next week. Same bat channel, same bat station. If Something Jack like lets that. me. If Jack lets you. Yeah. Uh -huh. What was it you normally say when in the outro correct you every week? Like to thank everybody. Yeah, I'd like, like to. Let's do it. <laughs> Glad y'all enjoyed it tonight. <laughs> See ya. We miss out. We miss out. Bye. Bye, everybody. Hey, what if I didn't come out with a shirt? <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Races. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs> driver of the 33 NASCAR late model 2011 Old Dominion Speedway track champion thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing TV I'm Sam Hunter, I'm 42 car I want to thank Let's Talk Racing Hi 
Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K and N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing.